This mansion was purchased for $7,000. The electricity in two thirds of the house did not work. The insulation was falling down inside of the walls and I had zero plumbing in the upstairs of the house. So I did what any sensible person would do. I have the tools, abilities, resources, and references to do this job myself and with the help of my friends, neighbors, and family. So I decided to completely restore the mansion with my own two hands. Up until this point, we have demolished the entire inside of the house. And we built a completely new floor on the main floor of the house. And this brings us to today. We are going to be working in the basement underneath of the kitchen window, which is right there. When we come into the house, we walk right into the kitchen. This is a big giant room that spans really far across. And since it spans so far across, we essentially need to have a big bridge that runs right under the middle of the floor in order to keep the floor from bowing out over the years. So today, we are going to be working on that gigantor beam that holds up the center of the kitchen floor. This morning, Justin noticed that this board, which we call plate, is below our level of the joists, the bottoms of the joists. So it means we need to cut it out of the way so the beam would go right up against the bottoms of these joists here. Concrete truck. Okay, call the concrete truck. Tell them to bring a bucket full, just one bucket. <laughs> the beam is up high, up tight, against the choice joist right where we want it. So the next step would be fill in these voids here with the concrete, the voids in the cinder block. Under it we have nice monolithic wall, which is great for the force transfer, but we want to have the same thing here instead of a just hollow cinder block. So we're gonna fill it in with concrete, then run a piece of board here so the concrete doesn't fall out and fill this in as well. And for this we have a nice rapid set 6500 PSI formula. Certified in concrete? Yeah, I got my certification from Justin. <laughs> Are you certified? <laughs> no. Yeah, I got certified yesterday. Oh, in concrete? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yesterday. So yeah, I, I got certified tonight. Or sorry, not this morning. This morning, I. Sorry, I just trust me. Oh man, no, that's a, a trowel. You don't cut it. What do you do with it? You'd use it for the concrete. I thought you were certified. I'm not making seams. I need a little like spatula tool and you don't have it. So I'm upgrading it to my needs. Perfect. I can scrape all the way down to the bottom of my bucket. So nice. Who hired this guy? Justin. Hey, don't be pointing at me. You can put your water reducer in there. The water what? Reducer. Water reducer? I thought you guys were certified. I think you've made this up. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this side is done. I think we worked the concrete good enough so it's all 
flown underneath of this beam and filled up the entire space and I as you can as you could tell I beat it with a hammer so it would settle and flow under. This type of concrete requires at least two inches of thickness and we definitely achieved that because it goes all the way down about eight inches thick. It's gonna be a nice solid pad for what we need. What do you think Justin? I think it'll be perfect. I'm doing the job they call of supervising right now. There's nothing. Another day Cole was yelling at me for cutting the block too far down. So I made this cut and I told him that I'll fix it, so this is the time to fix it now. Yeah. Paul went to get a piece of board so we can put it under the beam and then close our gap so we can do the same thing as we did on the other side and fill it, in. fill it in with concrete all the way up to the bottom of the beam. We're ready for Paul as long as he's ready with his board. Part of the concrete job is watching the concrete dry. We now have everything poured up, formed in, so basically this is all concrete solid down here already. And then we have the concrete blocks built from here up. So Roman just filled the void inside of here with concrete, so now this is just solid concrete from the bottom of the beam down to ac the actual solid wall. So that side's all done and formed up. This side's all done and formed up. So now we have to sit and wait. We have everything still jacked up. Looking at the back of the bag, the concrete will have a 3,000 PSI of holding capacity after one day. Then after seven days, it'll have 5,000. After 28, it'll have 6,500. This beam is not going to be holding 6,500 PSI of capacity on that concrete, but we just got the big, thick, heavy stuff. It really wasn't that much more for the bags to just go with the overkill. So we know we are good now, but now we have to sit and wait for that to dry. So I think we have another beam just like this one, maybe a little bit smaller. It's going to be going right around the corner in the old interrogation room. Right there. So we're gonna be taking that one out and we're gonna be putting a new one in. How's concrete looking, Roman? It's it's setting up, well, it's almost setting up. Starts to get harder a little bit, but does what it's supposed to do. So the first thing we need to do in here, we have this T-post, which is holding the current big floor supports on them, which is kind of funny if you wouldn't even say that because there's nothing resting underneath there. We literally have screws holding it up to the bottom of the floor joist right now. But Roman put in this temporary floor jack support, and then we are simply going to take this T-support. We're gonna cut it right down in the middle, and then so we are going to utilize the left side of it to sit our new 12 by whatever it takes to get over to that wall. Interesting. Ain't it, ain't it, ain't it. We're ready to make a cut in our cinder block and this time around Justin suggested we'll use the small one because all we have to do is to cut through the thickness of the block which is only about two inches and this grinder might just get it far enough. As you can see here at the block there is not much to cut. We'll cut all the way down to this seam, chisel this out and cut this seam. The same thing on the opposite side. Change of plans that 
that grinder doesn't have a shield and all that water just splattering back so it's gonna be super quick just make one two three four quick cuts with a demo saw and be done The fumes are actually worse than dust itself from the saw. It smells like just raw gas in here, so we'll let it air out for some time. While you're there, you want me to get a measurement? Yeah. Just pass the tape measure. 176 and three quarters. I'm saying it because if we forget the measurement, we can go back to the camera and hear replay. We are now ready to get our next set of LVLs. These ones are a little bit smaller than the ones we have under the kitchen, but they're still big nonetheless. I think these are the ones we need right here, Justin. Are they? Yep, top ones. Yep. Make sure these are long enough. They're not long enough. Ooh. You're gonna have to call Dan at the lumber yard. 176? Yes, 176 and three quarter. Oh, 169. We need the board stretcher, Roman. I'll go get it. You know, a true champion arm wrestler would carry that with one hand on top of the board. Like this. <laughs> Show me. <laughs> Just like this. Roman, I'm not a world champion arm wrestler yet. Yeah. <laughs> but a world so, champion, but that, a world gonna... champion would do that. Slipped. That's why you're not a world champion. That's why I have straps in the ar in arm wrestling. What is this? What? what? That's a good cutting blade. Who threw that away? <laughs> Roman, why do you always gotta get so yeah, aggressive right? with yeah, everybody? Why? He's just, got two hands and I got two fingers. <laughs> you wiener. Roman will be like this. Hey, Justin, can you hand me your pencil? Then he goes, <laughs> oh, you just stabbed me. <laughs> and then I grabbed your arm. Like, you all right? Yeah, look at that. <laughs> You're going to get lead poisoning. <laughs> You're going to have to go to the hospital. Good thing the calluses on my skin are like give seven me, inches thick. Give me five. <laughs> Better off staying away from you people. You people? You started it. <laughs> what did I start? You started by putting something in my pouch. I asked him. I wanted the wheel, put it in your pouch, and you start pulling it back. <laughs> and start stabbing me with a pencil. <laughs> yeah, no, let's not mess with that yeah, one. Yeah, get out of here. I think I got what we need for T30s. Yeah. Hey, we gotta flip these over so that way we don't have the ugly prints on the outside. They're actually straight. That's what do you mean they're actually straight? Up. They're engineered lumber. They're not always straight. I would do it in a circular motion. There you go. Now I have a serious question. Do you guys do it in a circular motion or a zigzag? I've never seen circular motion, but I don't want to get yelled again, so I just listen. By the way, I need to check my concrete. Say when. He just threw a nail at me. <laughs> just like making hot cocoa. We're doing this so that way we ensure the new beam has great contact area on top of this block wall. Since it's made up of a bunch of squares, sometimes the block wall can end up right in the center of a square. 
where there's nothing actually putting contact on the bottom of the beam. It would just be the edge of the cinder block. We want it to be the whole cinder block, so that's why we are filling the center with concrete. Distributing the load. Good. The recommendations of the water? No, I wasn't facing it up. Okay, I'm up. How much you need? Um, how much are you on? I'm on an inch and a quarter. We'll have to go your way, so. Oh, let's, let's hold it right there. Okay, I'm about center a block. Okay, let's take a look and see what we all got accomplished here. We have the big beam being supported right now by the bottle jack, and we do have a secondary brace support, and we have one over there as well. Because for whatever reason, that bottle jack seems like it wants to settle every now and again, and we don't really know why, but we don't want that beam falling out overnight and that sitting down on the concrete. We probably should be fine with the new stuff we poured for surely in the morning. That will be 100% A-OK -okay because it will be cured enough where we will not be putting 3,000 psi of pressure on it which is the 24-hour rating of that particular concrete that we mixed so that's in there drying it's doing its thing it runs all the way down the inside of the wall basically right behind where that shadow is and then on this end we just have it right behind where this block of wood would be so everything is doing everything that it should in here in the back room we did get the other beam up this one looks really good we have the exact same thing going on bottle jack holding it up right in the center we had everything concreted over in there we do have extra temporary supports being held up just in case that bottle jack gives out and then we have a little bit of a weird thing going on with this they sent us too short of a board compared to what we actually needed so we just made this one work we're not actually square with the wall if we look at it on the back side we're sticking off about that far but it's not going to be the end of the world because we are going to be doing a demolition of this concrete floor at some point so that way we can actually put floor drains down here because we don't have any and then we can also redo all the plumbing and stuff because the plumbing currently runs right on the other side of that wall underneath the floor and it is over a hundred years old plumbing is typically rated for a 50 year life so that is definitely well overdue so while we're doing everything else in here we are simply just going to address the floor and being able to manage all the water issues that basements have or this being over 100 years old does not have modern water management implements in it so we're going to be adding those but when we do that we will be able to move this wall essentially or we'll be able to put something up different with this pull we do need to do this beaming over here yet and it's going to run all the way back this is where the big black creepy black tank used to be and then over here in this room we have a beam that runs all the way from that wall through over into this corner so we do have a couple more to do in here these ones should be a lot easier than the two we just did the one in here was for surely the biggest absolute mammoth we calculated that thing weighs about 360 pounds so that was a really nice one to get up and i'm glad that job is done right now i'm just kind of doing some walking around the basement identifying what we have for flooring and what we would like to do for the future when we tear this up and everything we want to add in i'm definitely not a concrete expert i'm not a basement expert by any means but there are a ton of resources on youtube and i watch a lot of people who do concrete every single day and specialize in basements and they say hey do this don't do this and so i'm trying to take like 10 of them who do that compiling all the information together that they highly recommend 
doing. I'm looking at people who've built houses and mistakes that they've made and things that they wish they would have done differently. And then I'm wanting to implement those into this project as well. So I'm trying to do a bunch of research. And then once I have some research, now I have some information that I can bring to somebody that I know who does this or a contractor around here who does it. And then I actually know what I'm talking about. I know if they're kind of leading me in the right path or not. Or I say, hey, I don't want to do this because of that, because I've learned these from these other people. And so I feel like that's going to help us shape a lot of things. But right now I'm just kind of walking around looking to see what we have to work with on our canvas. We currently have a singular floor drain in the basement, which is hiding under that plunger. The plunger is keeping the gases from coming up right now. But the, that drain is hooked up to the toilet. So our septic line runs underneath of there. And then our old septic line that used to run to the upstairs bathroom was right there. And then that ran out the top of the house, but we're moving bathrooms up there. So we are moving that and that's also old cast iron and stuff. And we're gonna be replacing that with PVC. But besides that drain in the floor, we have nothing else in this room. There is nothing at the bottom of the stairs. There is nothing in what used to be the old boiler room other than a 23 foot deep well, which we will need to address that because I don't want the well in the basement anymore. We have no drains though at all. This is a really large Large room. It's probably 30 feet from this wall all the way to the back wall. So a lot of space with no water mitigation to it whatsoever. We have the old interrogation room, no drain in here. We have the room that used to have the big black creepy tank in it. There is absolutely no drain in here. So if we get any water in the basement whatsoever, we have no means of getting rid of it. There is no drains, there is no sump pumps. I've also been learning about a gas called radon, which apparently is some sort of radioactive active material that comes off of soil that gets in the air and it's the second leading cause of lung cancer behind smoking. It is the leading cause for non-smokers of lung cancer. And apparently the state of Iowa down in basements has an average of like a seven, whatever the rating is. And if you're above a four, you need to have some sort of radon mitigation going on. So we will have the opportunity to install some of that. I have not got a test, but I'm, even if our levels are low, I guess while we have everything tore up and we can put it in and get things installed and we know we're good, then we're going to do that. But like, that's something that we're gonna have to look into. I know nothing about that. So if you know something about that, help would be greatly appreciated. I understand drains in the floor. I have done that before. However, I would like to put drains in the room, but that doesn't really solve the problem. Like if we have water getting in to the basement, great, it goes into the floor drain, it's gone, but, in my opinion, a bigger problem is water even getting into the basement in the first place. So I would like to dig down on the outside and put in a drainage system all the way around the house. And while we have the concrete up, I don't know if this is a good idea or not. I was just thinking of this, but could we tap into that drainage system and then run it underneath of the floor? That way, if we have head pressure of water beneath the concrete and beneath the insulation that'll be in the floor, then it would just fall right into that drainage system and then it would just get drained down to the creek where the rest of our drainage tile would go to. Is that a good option to do? Like, I feel like we could just w run like one, maybe one on the side, one over here, right under the floor, do the same thing over there. Or could we get away with just one? Because I feel like if we have one on the outside, then water cannot get in, or at least it would not be touching the wall. But if you get water pressure from below the floor, things could come up through cracks if cracks eventually form. Does the one underneath, does that take the water away? Okay, is that something we can do? Then as we're doing the concrete on the floor, it will lead in perfectly with the crawl space that is located underneath of the basement stairs. This was the old crawl space. It had wood over it, so you could never see down in here. But as we can see, we have a crawl space right here. That's the entrance to the house. And this is just dirt floor. They threw some insulation over it years ago, but mice get in here, absolutely something terrible. Underneath of the stairs also has that same crawl space. This is dirt floor. You can see all the dirt and all the mice that have made tracks through the years under there. And it's kind of interesting looking at this spot here in the wall. There is absolutely no footing, foundation, stem wall, whatever you want to call this wall whatsoever. You can just look right down into dirt. So I want to rip up these stairs and I want to take out that dirt and then we can put concrete in there. We can put concrete in up here, but I would like to be able to tie it nice and seamlessly down into the concrete below. 
garage. So we will be doing this all kind of in one big project and we cannot do these stairs until we do the concrete. We can't do that landing until we do the stairs. And then when we do that landing, then we'll be doing those stairs. And then we have stairs right above our head that we will also need to be doing. But everything down here in the basement floor is going to have to take precedent first. Thinking about tearing up this concrete, it does not seem all that bad to me. And here's my reasons to believe that. We have this hole here on the floor. We can literally like, I do not understand. This is like an inch thick. And then we just have a big wide open spot down below. So maybe something broke through right there years ago and then a mouse or something got in there and dug and made that hole. That's how they were able to pour that cavity. But this is literally like an inch thick, like grabbing in there, it's like that thick. And then over here, when we dropped the big black tank off of this stand, we cracked up the floor pretty good. So that leads me to believe it is not super thick, so it should be pretty simple to break up. But <laughs> I'm thinking about pouring this now. We have windows right there we can back a concrete truck up to. Now we're gonna be able to get the chute into the window, not super far, but we're gonna be able to get it in. It's gonna make this room really no problem. We're gonna have a little bit of dragging to get it from that window over into this corner. But the problem arises with this side of the house. We have the porch over there. So we are looking at the bottom side of the porch right now and it sticks out 10 feet from the house. So we cannot get to that window. We have a big room right here. In this room, we have the exact same thing going on. We have windows there, but we are currently looking at the bottom side of the porch. You can see the framing right there. How do we get <laughs> concrete truck through there? I don't think we can. So we're gonna have a not so fun room in this room and a not so fun room in that room when it comes to getting concrete in, because we'll probably have to pile it up there and then basically shovel it over into these rooms. So we might want some extra labor when it comes to getting these two rooms poured. So we definitely have our hands full when it comes to planning for the concrete downstairs. We just have a few things to get lined up yet on what exactly we are going to do. I'm currently waiting for Wade, the electrician, to come out. They're gonna be putting in a temporary electrical box in the basement, so that way we can get sub panels set up on the main floor, the upstairs, and possibly the attic, and then we'll be able to run all the electricity to the rooms. I am waiting on the HVAC guys to get back to me on what kind of boiler that they are wanting to use for the inside of the house. They did BTU calculations to figure out exactly what we would need and they are supposed to be getting back to me so we're just waiting on them to get their proposal put together. I am still putting some ideas together on what we are doing for the heated flooring and I have some people that I need to get a hold of so the ball is in my court on reaching out to them. I am trying to finalize my plans out exactly on where all the bathrooms are going to lay out, the sinks are going to lay out, so that way we know where all the plumbing is going to go, then we can figure out where all the venting is going to be able to go for the HVAC side of things, because we have to have walls where things can drop down below, and when we're gonna be taking out walls in the back, we're not gonna have that, and there are certain things we can run on an exterior wall, and there are certain things we cannot run on an exterior wall, so something like a water line, we have to run on an interior wall, so it's, hey, we want the bathroom, but in order to have the bathroom, you have to make sure that the toilet's in the right place, the sink's in the right place, shower's in the right place, so that way the line coming in is not on an exterior wall because if that freezes inside the wall, pipe blows up, water spills everywhere, no es bueno. I really appreciate everybody sitting down and taking the time to watch these videos of this massive project. This project has been a relief for me. We are smack in the middle of a lawsuit on our million dollar Ben site and so I do a lot of dealing with engineers and attorneys and it's just a lot of frustrating space and working in the house is just fun. I can sit back, I can relax, I can use my mind, put together ideas of what I want things to look like and then I can build them on paper and then I can show those ideas on paper to Justin, to Roman or to a designer, an engineer and then they can tell me, hey, this is going to work, this is an awesome idea, hey, this is not going to work, this is what we recommend changing, Here's we, we have things for you. I like this kind of stuff because it, it's, this is like my hobby, like when people go fishing, people go hunting, people like driving their boats around or their motorcycles. 
that is building things for me. So this house project very much so falls into that. And with everything going on on the bin site side of things, I'm just glad for this because it allows me to get away for a little bit and kind of be in my own little world. Once we get done working at the end of the day, I get started on the farm activities and on the weekends, I take care of the farm activities. I still run the business side of the farm and all the ins and outs to go with that in the financials. So that is my job. But during the week, lately anyway, I have been able to get away and work in the house. So it's been greatly appreciated and it's because of you guys watching these videos and taking the time to sit down and join us that I am able to do that. It would not make sense for me to be able to take this much time out of my farming day to come and do this if it weren't for you. So I just wanted to say a big thank you. And as we're going through this Ben site lawsuit, this project is helping me a lot. So huge thank you to you guys for allowing that to be able to happen for me. But with that being said, I am tired. Don't forget to check out the link in the description or go to cornstar.farm if you wanna pick up some Cornstar Farms merch. Otherwise, that's all I got for today. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.